Do you suck with a bow in Valheim? Are your friends constantly making fun of you because you can never hit your shot? Well, I'm here today to help you dial in your bow, both with aiming and knowing which bow to use, which arrow to use, and all the information that you could possibly ever want to know about a bow in Valheim. It's kind of ridiculous. So, on that note, let's get into it, guys. I've got timestamps to what the bows do, what the arrows do, what does the bow skill do, how do you actually practice to get better, both by yourself and with a friend. And so let's just, uh, let's just do it. All right, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a little shooting range at your base. Um, you can level up your bow skill just by shooting a rock or a tree stump, and you can see it anytime you see zero damage. Every time I shoot an arrow, I'm actually raising my bow skill. Uh, but I like putting a little banner here so that I can aim at this clover leaf at the bottom, and that's a little target that I can practice with. You know, uh, you can also use a stake wall right here. The only problem with a stake wall is that you have to repair it every 30 to 100 shots, and it will de it will get destroyed. So you know, rock is probably recommended. But if you can't find one nearby, just use a stake wall if you want to make a little little range for yourself. Um, another thing that you could do to make it more efficient for leveling up your bow skill is to actually put a fire and a roof over you so you get the rested buff while you're shooting and your stamina regeneration is like 300% um, better. Um, so yeah, I'll just quickly show you what how to make it. It's just two meter wood beams and some one meter wood beams here and you just place a banner over the top. The reason that we use the banner instead of something like a sign is the sign will actually take damage from the arrows and will eventually get destroyed. So I, I did try to do that where you place a sign here and then just change it to like an O and then you aim for the O, but it does get destroyed by the uh, by the arrows eventually. So that's why I like the banner because it doesn't take any damage and I can still clearly shoot for this clover leaf at the bottom. The only banner that actually works is the black banner. The other banners don't really have a good target the way that the, the black banner does. So that's why I recommend the black one. If you've used a bow in Valheim, you know that when you shoot, you have to aim quite a bit high because the bow or the arrow actually drops down and to the left a little bit. When you're up close, it drops down to the left a little bit more than if you're further away. So from further away, you don't need to adjust as much. So if I'm at 10 meters here and I shoot at the target, you can see that I got I to gotta aim roughly a meter. You know, it depends on what bow you're using, but roughly a meter above the target and a little bit to the right. But the further you get away, the less you're going to have to adjust. It's not like I'm twice the distance away, so I need to aim twice as high. It's, you know, it's going to be... It's kind of a feel thing. You can't really calculate it, right? And if you're on a hill and you're shooting at them or they're a moving target, it's just there's a lot of different factors that go into it and you kind of just have to adjust based on feel. Okay, now we're going to talk about what bow skill does and doesn't do. The first thing that you would assume with a bow skill raising is that the arrow would drop less. But that's actually not the case. I'll quickly prove that to you. The first arrow was a bow skill of zero, and this second arrow is going to be a bow skill of 100. And we'll quickly just go over here. You can see that the arrows basically land in the same spot. Uh, that means that there's really no difference in how much they drop. Now you, you you could say like, oh, that there was a little bit of a difference there. That's just because there's a little bit of variance whenever you shoot arrows. Not every arrow lands in the exact same spot. I'll quickly prove that to you. I'll shoot five arrows here. You can see I didn't move my mouse and yet the arrows are all a little bit different landing in different areas. Now I'll go a little bit further away, it'll, it'll be more obvious. And you can see that there's actually quite a bit of variance with where the uh, the arrows land. So sometimes you're shooting a bow, you're like, man, I'm, I was right on that guy, why didn't I get it? Sometimes the, there's just some variance in uh, you know where the arrows actually land. What bow skill does do is it reduces the amount of time that it takes to draw your arrow back. So it's instant. If you're at a bow skill of 100, you can see I'm just left clicking and it's instantly drawn back. If I have a skill of zero, then it takes a really long time to draw your bow back. If we have a skill of 50, it's somewhere in between. And, you know, as you get higher bow skill, it just takes less time to draw your bow back, which is less stamina used by you because the entire time that you're drawing your bow back, it's going to be using stamina. Now, the higher skill that you have with your bow, you're actually going to do more damage. Uh, there's a little multiplier in there based on your bow skill. Uh, there's an, actually an equation that you can look up in the Valheim Wiki. Um, I couldn't find it, but I, I know that for they have it for weapons, and I'm pretty sure they have it for bows too. Uh, you can really dig into that, but 
all you got to know is the higher your bow skill, the more damage that you're going to do. It's not a crazy amount. It's not like someone doing it, you know, with a bow skill of 100 is going to do 100 times as much damage. It's, it's kind of a small multiplier. Okay, now let's talk about the difference in bows for their damage profile. A uh, crude bow does a damage of 22. If it's fully upgraded, it gets a damage of 31. That's all pierce damage. But if you had a fine wood bow, you actually get more damage than a fully upgraded crude bow. So that's why I recommend for most weapons and most armor, you don't really want to upgrade it because it's a lot of resources for just a little bit of a, a bonus. Um, the only two bows that I recommend upgrading are the fine wood bow because it's really easy to get deer hide and fine wood. And you're going to be using almost exclusively the bow against the elder. And it's a really long fight. So I recommend upgrading the fine wood bow. And then obviously upgrading the Draugr Fang just because it's the last bow in the game. You can see that all bows do pierce damage, so they're really effective against things that are weak against pierce, like trolls. Uh, but the Draugr Fang also will put on a poison uh, against its target. Something that they don't mention in the wiki is that a crude bow will actually, the arrows will drop more than a Draugr Fang. So you can see right there, the first arrow was a crude bow, and the second one was a Draugr Fang. I don't know if upgrading the bows actually changes that, but I do know that a crude bow will drop more than a fine wood bow, and a fine wood bow will drop more than a huntsman bow, etc. So the the next tier of bow will actually help how much your arrow drops. Okay, now let's talk about arrows. The wood arrow is the first arrow that you can make, just with pure wood, and you can see it just as pure pierce damage. Um, most arrows do pure pierce damage, but there are some exceptions. The silver, poison, frost, and fire arrows have a damage modifier where they do a damage over time effect. So the fire arrow does 22 fire damage, and there's a range between 12 to 19. But it will do more damage based on if the enemy that you're facing is weak against fire or strong against fire. So you want to use the fire arrows against enemies that are weak against fire, obviously. You want to use frost arrows against enemies that are weak against frost. So uh, fuelings are weak against frost. Yoglith, the last boss, is weak against frost, but is actually strong against fire. You want to use fire arrows against Modair, the, the dragon boss, because he's weak against fire. So the, the arrow that you pick, you want to pick a damage modifier that is strong against your enemy. That's basically all there is to it. And I don't really recommend using a bronze head iron head or even a silver arrow simply because it's a lot of mining to get these the, this ore and i don't think it's really worth a little bit of extra damage so in, in general i would recommend using wood um, you can use poison if, if needed i don't think that there's really much reason to use poison but obsidian's a good one needles are a good one needles are pretty easy to get um, flint head fire um, these are all pretty easy to get. You just need to make sure that throughout the game, you're shooting those seagulls because feathers later on in the game are really valuable. And you know the final boss takes a lot of arrows. So just make sure that you're getting those feathers throughout your game. Now let's talk about technique. How do you actually want to aim this thing? In general, you got to aim higher than what you're trying to hit, right? You also want to make sure that you fully draw the bow back for two reasons. I'll quickly show you. If I don't draw the bow back at all, I do three damage. If I fully draw the bow back, I do 40. So drawing the bow back does more damage. It also makes your arrows more accurate. That's what your arrow looks like if you don't pull it back. So there's gonna be a lot more drop if you don't fully pull it back as well. So in general, always pull your bow back the entire way. Unless the enemy is really low on health and you just need a quick little hit, then sure, just tap, tap your arrow. As far as aiming goes, what I like to do is I like to aim directly for the, the target, and then at the last minute after I'm fully pulled, pulled back, I will lift up a little bit, and I'm, what I'm doing is imagining a line between the character's chest and neck area. That's where the arrow actually comes out of, and I'm trying to imagine a line from my neck to my target. Okay, so I just shot one arrow, and you can see that there's a little streak behind your arrow. You want to pay attention to that after your first arrow and then use that as a guide to adjust for your next one. So your first arrow is kind of a guess at where you think it's going to go. And then after that, you're going to use that that first arrow to make adjustments to your second and third shot. OK, now, how do you actually get better with the bow? The short answer is just use it a lot. Go out and hunt deer, go out and hunt boar, go out and just use it against different enemies. And you're going to get better over time. 
you know the best way to get better at anything is to to just do it a lot and do it a lot each day you don't you don't need to go crazy you don't need to become a valheim bow god unless it's just fun for you i'm an aim training guy i've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in uh kovacs aim trainer so i really like thinking about this stuff um but it's just that's the best way to get better is actually use it now i would say the the ultimate fastest way to get better with the bow is actually to get a friend or a group of friends and fight each other with bows because you know a deer has you know it's got somewhat unpredictable movement but once it starts running in a straight line it's probably going to run in a straight line for a while so you can kind of predict its movement but fighting against another human being you know they're going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff and jumping and, and they're going to be hiding and trying to use cover so in general you're always going to get better competition and more skill from fighting your friends uh, but it's not necessary so again you know if you're fighting your friends you're going to get better if you're fighting enemies in the forest, you're going to get better and you're going to get a lot better at like hitting moving targets with different terrains and, and different uh, variations. So that's probably the best way to get better. But if you want to get better at a target range at your house because you want to just A, raise your bow skill, right? And B, you just want to kind of figure out the mechanics a little bit better. I suggest making something like this, making a little firing range, using a target and then just moving around and trying and trying different things trying uh trying shooting at 10 meters versus 20 meters trying it on different hilltops kind of moving a lot i think is good because you get practice with moving targets even though the target that you're trying to hit is, is not moving you yourself are moving so you add a little bit extra challenge um, and then you can kind of dial in you know at different ranges how how much the the bow will drop so this is one way to get better just at home. You get a lot more reps this way because I can shoot 100 arrows inside, you know, a couple minutes. Whereas if I'm out hunting, you may not see a deer for a minute or two. So just another good way to get better. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you did like this video, please like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. Uh, my name is Silky Crisp. Um, peace out.